Starting lineups brought to you by Kubota. Lance Jones struggled for Southern Illinois in the quarterfinal. Was just one for 11 for just three points, but an important part of the lineup for Southern Illinois on the Drake side of things. We got it once. <laughs> Competition never stops. <laughs> Darnell Brody against Clarence Rupert to take the tip. Drake wins it. Underway. Semifinal number two for the right to face Bradley. In the Mountain West of the uh, Missouri Valley Conference Championship. Well, defense immediately. Southern Illinois looking to uh, deny that inbounds pass to the sideline, and they get possession. All right, so you have Drake. They're coming in off of a 74-62 win against 7 seed Murray State. And that was close in the first half. Drake found that separation second half. Southern Illinois... What a game it was against Missouri State. Missouri State took the lead early, had a 13-point advantage. Salukis came back. Jones banks in a three. For Southern <laughs> Illinois, he needed that one. <laughs> he did not intend to bank that shot, I guarantee you. <laughs> he was just one for 11. Oh, a five from three against Missouri State. The strength of the defense is the guards on this team. They are two of the best at stealing the basketball. Xavier Johnson and Lance Jones, number 10 and number 5. Johnson played great the other day when they came from behind to win it. That is he with the basketball. Senior transfer from George Mason. Very, very heady player. Experience from the portal. The mask. Penetrates inside. Floater short. Darnell Brody boxes out for the rebound. Both post guys that are in the game right now, one from Newark, New Jersey, one from Philly. Both 6'8", 250-ish. Heavyweights. So Luke, he's running. Newton, back to the top. Shots in for a three. Perfect. They got back to the hotel last night after their win at 11.30 at night. We were on a Zoom call with Coach Mullins early today, and I asked him about the recovery. And you know, they have lots of ways, but he said the best thing is for rest. I even think some guys may have had IVs or were getting cramps. Imagine, though, coming off of a thrilling victory like that late at night. It's hard to get some rest after that and go to sleep. Yeah. And, and Why? Your mind, yeah, your mind is going, and... You're juiced up like that. This looks like the, how the first game began. Indeed. And Indiana State came out hot. Saluki's come out hot in this one. Jones with that next three. Sturts underneath. Some contacts. Down by Marcus Damask. Great start for Southern Illinois from deep. Terrific passing. Notice that ball fake to the side by Xavier Johnson to get the defense off him. And then right there, Lance Jones, that's his thing. He has unlimited range, although he only shoots about 29% from three. See this guy on the line right here? He is the leading rebounder in the history of Drake <laughs> at six foot three. Wow. You talk about a tough hombre. Garrett Sturts is that. In fact, of the 37 teams that have been in the Missouri Valley Conference all time, he is the shortest one to lead a program yeah. in all-time rebounds. He's one of those thousand-point scorers. Coming into the tournament, he had 1,362 points. Wilkins had 1,500, and Roman Penn had 1,358. Of course, Tucker DeVries has had over 1,000 in just two years. They get Rupert on that last foul, by the way, his first. Lance Jones, he's feeling it off the front iron. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this full court pickup. This can be annoying. They are small with these three guards in there. But that is the strength of their D. Every dribble seems to be contested. Penn flips, starts. Turns the corner and draws the contact again. 
So an 85% free throw shooter will go to the line for three and four. Hard drive right here, body contact everywhere. Is that Rupert's second? It is. We talk about Drake and their uh, experience, and they have five guys who shoot better than 80% from the free throw line. Five guys. Penn at 82, DeVries at 85, Wilkins at 81, Sturts at 84, and Sadar Calhoun at 82. That's doing some work. No question. So J.D. Mula comes in to replace Rupert with the two fouls. That's not good news for them. Rupert, of course, is the starter and uh, much more experienced than Mula. Mula had eight boards against Missouri State. He's a big, strong guy, no doubt about that. That's the second time he did that. Ball fake to the side, the defense moves, he gets an open from the top of the key. Brody crashing to the floor as he was trying to set a screen. That pick, DeVries lines it up. Well, sure, looked off as soon as it left his hands. Johnson has the unenviable task of guarding Roman Penn. Roman Penn is not as quick as Johnson. But he is really a guy who, who seldom gets out of control. Look at that. Johnson bounce pass underneath. There's J.D. Moonen off the bench for the first bench points of the game. I'm impressed by the speed. You watch these guys on tape and on video and watch some of their game. You watch their game yesterday. But boy, up close and personal from half court where we are, they are super quick. Wilkins, high volume three-point shooter. That might have been tipped by Newton. No doubt. Shot clock still running. The breeze, weight room, fade away. Front rim. Brody the Obor puts it home. So the Seton Hall transfer getting some second chance points. They need him in this game. The defense of the perimeter guys of Southern Illinois are going to take a lot away from the perimeter game of Drake in this game. Tucker DeVries might want to get inside and post also. Just five to shoot. It'll have to be Johnson. Dances with Sturts. Just Sturts throws it away. Shot clock violation. Wow. Nice D by Sturts, because Johnson is no joke. I've worked with you a good amount this year. One of the things you've taught me is, hey, percentages aren't everything. Hey, I told you, I'm listening to you. So you saw the percentage there for Southern Illinois, three-point percentage. Okay, it's near the bottom of the conference. But they shoot so many, that volume of threes that they get up may be more important than the percentage. Yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes that helps you two-point percentage because what happens is people guard the three very tightly, and with their quickness in the backcourt, those guys can get past people and get to the lane. Darnell Brody. Whistles the ball is inbounded, and that's a foul. I am so glad to see number four, Connor Enright, in this game. Number four in white got hurt yesterday. He went down and didn't play the rest of the game. And uh, he told me right before the game, Chris, when we were setting up, that uh, he's 100%. And he gives, he is very, very quick and gives them some high energy at the offensive end, too. Great coach. Three-pointer off to the right from Xavier Johnson. Yeah, one of the things that Drake coach Darren DeVries told us, he gets speed off the bench. Yep. Connor Enright, Nate Ferguson when he comes in, that's quickness. And Calhoun, all three of those guys. Evan with more. Yeah, guys, Connor Enright dealt with some dizziness and was lightheaded. That's why he had to leave that game yesterday. He was evaluated here at the Enterprise Center by team doctors and doctors at the facility. He was also recommended to a local St. Louis hospital. He's evaluated again this morning. He's been cleared multiple times for this game, which is obviously a great sign. Big boost. Rupert DeVries, big guy. Nice out-of-bounds play. I think he should be in the lane more in this game. They don't have size to deal with him. He's got great moves when he gets it in there. And we can see Brody already has taken advantage. Two fouls on Rupert to start the game. Their center. Defense, 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 
This guy hasn't gotten off yet. They're double teaming Marcus Damask. Works out to a three player. Trent Brano can't connect. There's Calhoun. He was great yesterday. He's not, he doesn't score much, but they were really having trouble guarding the quickness of Murray State, and he got in the game and shut people down. You can hit a three as well, Sadar Calhoun. Thank you, Sadar. That's a bonus. <laughs> Started three of three from three since the missed their last four. It's triggered a Drake nine nothing run. They got more quickness. The Sadar Calhoun and then right in the game. Lance Jones. He shoots a lot of contested threes. That won't be the last one. That's why his percentage is in the 20s instead of the 30s. <laughs> That's quick. Rising fire too much on the bank shot. Valley all defense. Oh, Xavier Johnson commits an offensive foul. Look Connor at him on the floor. Wright. Look at Connor right now on the floor, man. <laughs> <laughs> Regular season where they lost on the road to Bradley. This is a team that had won 10 regular season games in a row before that loss. Yeah, and, and uh, Bradley had nine, I think, at the time, and now they're at 12. 12 straight for Bradley. Drake and Bradley are the front runners, neck and neck. Trying to meet Bradley is Drake in the championship. And right, who just took the charge last possession. Moving screen called on Nate Ferguson. I have never seen so many moving screens called. There must have been seven or eight of them in the first game. And right here he is. I mean, he's moving. He's moving his body outside his cylinder, which is also when you lean like that, that's always going to be called. Banks number three also in. They are doing a good job on demand so far. I mean, nice pass. Mula money. <laughs> Marcus Damask see his numbers from the quarterfinal. Team that lead, player that leads the team in points, rebounds, and assists for the second straight season. DeVries misses a three. Yeah, he's a player, no doubt about that, and he is explosive as well. He gets down very low, uses his legs to really create space. Dalton Banks off the Saluki's bench. DJ Wilkins, number zero in white, is a three point shooter. And right, hounded. Breeze wants the high screen. Ferguson rolls, gets it on the roll. Poked by Brown. Great rotation. Southern Illinois. They won 20 games for the first time since 2017. Come in 23 and 9. Demas Faye shorts. Wilkins between the legs. Debris steps into it. Oh, that is from Clark Street. <laughs> the intersection of Clark Street and 14th. Right outside the Enterprise Center. I mean, he almost made it from the arch on the court. <laughs> <laughs> nice switch. Calhoun on demand is pretty good. Jones zooms, knocked away. Looking saves. Good, good save. Tucker DeVries just hit a three. The Larry Bird, Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year. Good to tuck it. Tucker, right there. Crossover, step back, hop back, bang! When you get your feet underneath you, it gives you lift. And you can shoot from further out. Nice play by Sadar.
A lot of rhythm on that Sadar Calhoun three-point shot, a 35% three-point shooter. Oh, watch this. The mask against Ferguson. High off the back of the rim. Nice D by Ferguson, huh? He's a pretty athletic guy. He can really run. And right bounces. Ferguson receives. Drake playing with pace. Wilkins a rainbow three. Pure. 1,500. With eight minutes left to go in the first half, and he averages 17. Not getting a lot of uh, open looks at all. Being double teamed, much like Mast in the first game, he is now on the bench. D'Amico is in the game, number 23, who played very well yesterday. D'Amico's three, halfway down. I like Brody back in the game. He was very effective early. And scores mentality. Floats it. Mr. Pull-Up. That's my name for him. Mr. Pull-Up. Shoots threes, but man, he gets to the lane and just stays on balance. Let's go to Evan. You, met, you mentioned Marcus Damask. Slow start to this game. Learned before tip that he's dealing with a left ankle injury. Hasn't practiced at all. Obviously, big night last night, but a quick turnaround. Suffered that injury on Wednesday at practice, so it could be bothering him less than 24 hours in a physical matchup. Very interesting. Keep an eye on that. That, that is... He is like that. It's going to be affect his his speed and explosiveness, which is his biggest asset. He lose every bit of it against a tough break defense. A big collision. Garrett Sturks hits the ground hard. He's feel like he's been on the deck three or four times already. All right, so this is Marcus Damask and what he means for the second straight year. He's led the team in scoring, rebounding, and assists. Yeah, and, and his numbers 45%, 35%, and 87% from the free throw line. He clearly is the best player on this team and one of the best in the league. Garrett Sturge is playing very quickly, as you can see, and he's getting to the free throw line. That's his fifth free throw already in this game. And he shoots 84 from the charity strike. Coach Darren DeVries told us that Sturts is the most unique player that he's ever coached. Yeah, doesn't, doesn't go up top for dunks. Not much of a shooter. He rebounds. It almost seems like Charles Barkley like when you're that small and can get that many rebounds. And can get to the line. Johnson finds the ladder to get it back. Rupert playing with two fouls amongst the trees. Out comes Drake. Ten. Was the Bulldogs slow it down. That was a nice tip by Brody. You, 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 re, you reward your big guy when he does something like that. Get him the ball. Stan Southern Illinois. Ooh, Rupert, number four, is in with two, as you mentioned. He's got a big personality. He's a big body as well. He wants to play. He looks a little angry out there right now. Jones to end the drought, way off. Approaching five minutes without a point for Southern Illinois. Then off the back of the rim. Because of their lack of size, Southern Illinois doesn't get a ton of offensive rebounds. I mean, they play in three guard lineup the whole time. And when they shoot outside deep, that can be a problem for them. That's a Saluki turnover. So what has changed from the opening couple of minutes where Southern Illinois was getting good shots? I, I think they were juiced up to play, and, and I, I think a little bit of fatigue from last night has set in already. I mean, I'm not saying that they're totally tired or they're not going to compete. They will. And they could win, obviously, still, with motivation from that man. But I think sometimes the adrenaline before a game, you know, you're playing the two seed, it's a big crowd, and you know, all that. DeVries, master of the mid-range. Yeah, uh, he's, check a look at his shoes. See, I got new <laughs> shoes on today, and, and you know, you I didn't even notice, on that. I didn't comment yeah. on them, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, look at my bad partner. Yeah, well, Evan, Evan noticed him, and Ken Mack, I you noticed him.
But those uh, those are you can go out at night and still be lit up with those shoes that he's got on. I know Evans kicks got the attention of a few people courtside. I saw that earlier today. Jones with big bodies on the interior can't get it to drop. Devries steps into a long ball. Oh yeah! Oh, 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 oh. Back to back 32 point games earlier this season. He told us yesterday, I'm keeping these as long as we keep playing. But he's, he's got him out of in the closet for some big games. <laughs> as I say, save them for the big ones. That's a unique and interesting philosophy with it, but it's working. Amen. Johnson to end the run. Wow. Whoa. That ball hit the side of the backboard. And it's been a drought that's lasted over six minutes. And maybe it can end at the free throw line. Lance Jones. They are small with Jones and Newton and Johnson in at the same time. But that's their normal lineup with uh, Rupert and Damask. And Damask not very much involved. See right there the extended run and the extended drought that finally ends at the free throw line with Jones connecting on the first of two. The last foul on Connor Enright is his second, so he heads out. Starts back in. Southern Illinois have raced out to the lead in this game and, and Drake absolutely clamped down to build a double-digit lead And Body gets it back fires and it's wow you talk about experience Jones tried to take the charge fell to the floor Penn took advantage. Well, that might be the best way sometimes to officiate instead of like a flop. Just let him go. take a charge and they don't call it. You're out of the play. Johnson stepped on the sideline. This one is that uh, Drake is six for nine from three point range, and uh, that is fantastic. And of course, the mask is 0 for three. Then out of the stop action. And he's used that floater a couple of times. Doesn't drop this time. It's been over seven minutes since Southern Illinois has made a field goal. Yeah, and, and they're not getting good shots. Got to credit Drake's defense doing a very, very good job. And not getting any second shots either because of their lack of size. Brody says no. Blocks it out of bounds. Brody is not your friend. <laughs> nice job there. He's not a guy who elevates that much, but uh, he, he was the second guy back on that one. Zoom off the inbounds. Brody contest off the front rim. Brody skies. Uh, that was good because he challenged it, then got back for the rebound. That is very difficult to do. Lost. Over 20 pounds in the offseason. It worked. It was on the Valley most improved team this season. The Vries fade away from the elbow. It's perfect. They are getting quality shots, and the Vries is on fire. 12 on 5 of 8 shooter. That's why he's the Larry Bird player of the year in the Missouri Valley. It has to be one of the best awards in college basketball. Now this one a foul as the mask was curling around. Watch the dribble. Two single screens for him. Gives him just enough room to make that shot. If he doesn't get those two single screens and somebody's on him, it's just a pass off to the sideline. Good teamwork. One great actions to get him going. Sturts. Look at Sturts' defense on Damask. 
Now they switch. Wilkins on him. Now they come and double team him. And he throws it. Oh, oh man. Out of bounds. Someone think, only thinks that DeVries touched it. The yeah, officials come together. They're right. They're right. Reverse the call. Just four to shoot. But you noticed how three people were involved in guarding him that time? Yeah. And right here. Nice slow mo camera. DeVries hit it off his fingers. Four seconds on the shot clock. The mask off the curl, one to shoot, gets it up. There's his first field goal. And they'll look at it to see if it was off in time. I don't have the advantage. I just wish we could do all of those things a little quick, quicker. Roman Penn under control, as always. Sturge aggressive, as always. And DeVries scoring, as always. <laughs> Is Brody screening as always? <laughs> <laughs> There's a foul on Xavier Johnson. That's his second. I would guess that Brody, if you. Big guys with his body size usually set a lot of screens. So I would guess that if you said, okay, who are the top five screen setters in the Missouri Valley? He might be in that group. I'm sure there's a coach in the Valley that is charted screen assists for the, at least their team. <laughs> the hub of the offense at the free throw line holding the ball. DeVries, of course, bodies around him. He starts is not going to shoot that jumper from out there. Size mismatch double. Brody doesn't get Wow. Impressive. Drake's been impressive all half. Indeed. We get the Brody chant yes. by the uh, assembled Drake. Now the energetic crowd. Brody almost bought that one. Instead, it snuck up and in and on. Clarence Rupert, who had two early fouls. That's a big basket there. Well, they're behind a lot, so he has to be in the game. Brian Mullins was talking about a lot of the Division I transfers and the different guys that he brought in. And when he was talking about Rupert, he talked about what a big personality he has. Constantly talking out there. First Rupert. He was on that St. Peter's team a season ago in the first ever 15 seed to make the Elite Eight part of what makes this month the best. Well, I hope John Calipari is not listening. Um, does that I'm bring sorry. back bad memories for him? <laughs> yeah, a couple of uh, fan bases, some big time fan bases along the way. <laughs> I got disappointed. And around it in. Again, that elbow, like one handed shot, has is, is been his go to today. It really has. And it's been his go to his whole career. He is Mr. Mid Range. Look at under the basket, it's totally clear. Finally get it under the three-point line with just 10 to shoot. Newton lines it up. Can't knock it down. <laughs> Pressed of the rebounding of Brody. So eight three, seconds. The freeze came all the way from the other side of the court to double the mask. Leaning three. High off back iron. Brody's tip is short, and that'll do it. Or a first half. Was to work on his body. Become a little bit more slim, quicker, better to get to the basket. And we're seeing the complete game thanks to you know, that slight body change. Well, he's dedicated. I'm sorry. He's dedicated. That's for sure. And, uh, you know, he has a coach who's a great coach in his dad. So uh, he's going to be a pro. So the Illinois miss out of the gate. Let's check in with Evan Washburn. We well, spoke with Brian Mullins offensively. He wants to see his guys attack the paint more. Felt like they settled for threes. One for ten after that three for three start. And defensively, just like you mentioned, we spoke in game. It's all about defending the three when dealing with this Drake squad. Well, Southern Illinois gets a much needed poke away in their first defensive possession of the second half. Rupert wants the back end. 
against Brody. He's giving up size, but he's strong himself. And get a steal off the inbounds. The mask for Rupert. There it is for Southern Illinois. Just what they needed. What a great start. Their fan base has come alive as well. Four quick points. Changes the flow of the game. The breeze pulls his way inside, but can't finish. The mask on the boards at four rebounds, now five. Jones, great space with the dribble and connects. Six straight for SIU. Wonder about a timeout here. The breeze knows that his team is experienced. Wants movement. Roman Penn. Gets it back. Wilkins has not had many looks. They need some outside shooting here. It can't just be the breeze. Then it's seven in the first half. Looks at the shot clock. Says five. Says have to do the fadeaway. Brody the old board. One power dribble. Second chance off. And Xavier Johnson digs it out. Quickness oversize on that one. Jones turns on the Jets and gets hacked. He'll head to the line and Southern Illinois has come out of the gates on fire. You don't win 23 games and have any give up in you. They are 23 and 9. They're the three seed in this tournament. The one seed has already advanced to the final. Drake would like to be the two seed to join them. But Lance Jones and his teammates have some other things in mind right now. They have come out of the uh, halftime talk on fire. First foul on Brody. You remember your best halftime speech you ever gave? I didn't give any good ones. Okay, it was just <laughs> guys go out there and play hard. You know, try. No, no. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different things you do. And, and, First time uh, speech. When you're behind, time. when you're behind, it's like they were by 16. It's motivational in nature. You know, it's not technical in nature. Other times when it's a, this, you know, close game, either way, sometimes it's technical stuff that you really get into. But I doubt that that was part of uh, Mullen's speech. And Penn ends the run from the Newton, Iowa. Former walk-on starts to the most games in Missouri Valley Conference history. We can guard people. Off the screen, Jones off balance. Kick that leg out. And the rest of the foul is on the contest of Penn. Wow, DeVries does not like that. He doesn't get that fired up that much. This is a James Harden play right here. He kicks that out. That should be a foul on a shooter. Whoa. I can't believe they're not looking at this unless they can't. That's a big pivot point instead of an offensive foul. Three free throws for Jones. See Penn over here talking to the official and he's explaining he kicked it out and, but he's not doing it in a way that uh, embarrasses the official. So Jones a 76% free throw shooter and if he sees that ball go through you know how shooters are only 28% from three this year but it's high volume he will launch. Oh, yeah, and launch from deep. It was 18, the lead for Drake. Now it's just eight. Starts crosses, spins, pivots, hooks off the front rim. Rupert chases and vacuums up the rebound. I was impressed with Rupert's feet on that play. His movement side to side on a quick guy like Sturts was very impressive. Lateral quickness for a guy 6'9, 240. The mask has been relatively quiet. All Valley first team off the back rim. 
Cooper gets the over. Johnson, yes! That run to start the first half. It's played itself out here in the second half. See if it can sustain itself. They hit a wall in that first half. A they large did. drought for over 10 minutes without a field goal. Well, they're feeling good about themselves right now. Roman Penn bangs it off the backboard. Gets when they, out, to the line. When they get in trouble, he's the guy that they rely on. There's no doubt about that. Xavier Drake. Drake is one for five in the second half. Not very good. Southern Illinois, four for six. So obviously, that's why we got this 13 and two gap. Enright is in number four to give them speed, as is Calhoun. They did a great job in the first half. Calhoun was two of two from downtown. And right number four, he's going to pick up Jackson full court and now drops back. Calhoun fired up to play. He's guarding the mask. The mask, top scorer for Southern Illinois. Rupert's out there trying to give screens. Xavier Johnson attacks the closeout. Behind the back to Rupert. Dazzling display. Eight points for Rupert. He was limited in the first half because of the two fouls early. Fifteen to four run for the Salukis. Side versus speed here. Jones held up. Penn off the front rim, gets it back. And a chance to reset. Coach Darren DeVries says, Roman Penn quite often just bails me out, makes me look good. We are in the wrong play. There's a bump on DeVries and a foul called on SIU. Behind the back. Easy finish. Credit the pass. Savior, nice play. Woo. Hey, that pass looked easy. Ninth dime of the game. Last foul on Lance Jones, his first. And Graves off the pin down. Fires back rim. Iso. Rupert wanted it. Drop step spin. Great defense by Ferguson. Newton instead. Can't get the leaner. Retrieves. That's just not comfortable. No, no. He, he lost the handle right there. That was it. He was going to go to the basket. Squares up. Rick through. Teardrop. Two. That looked more like him. 2019 Wisconsin Mr. Basketball, Marcus Damask. Only five points. He averages 17. And, and on. Man, does he change the pace of the game for these guys? Did it in the first half. Now at a critical time, takes it all the way in. Sturtz is in right now for DeVries. I think DeVries needs a little bit of a blow. And now you got some real quickness in the game. Sturtz and Calhoun and uh, Connor Enright, all quick players who can take it to the paint. Well, on the flip side, an issue for the Salukis. Xavier Johnson is four fouls. So Trent Brown comes in, the starting league guard, Johnson. Wow. And dire foul trouble. Brown 
turns it down. Jones and Enright do battle. High screen, step back, Jones, three. Halfway down, Wilkins retrieves the rebound. Boy, you can just sense the pace going more. Zigzag move to the rim. Ferguson almost step back, count it. And that pace, you mentioned it, coach. They like they turn on a switch. Yep. You do it with personnel. It's like two different teams. Yep. Nice to have two different teams, right? <laughs> Cut down to three, Drake back up bait. Jones tiptoes off the body of Mula. And right again, defensively. There's that pace, push once again. And right, and Drake slows it down. Ferguson can run too, number 24. Starts across the lane, floats it in. What a change. What a great decision by Coach DeVries. Only player in Drake history with 1,200 points, 900 rebounds. Garrett starts at 6-3. The mask can't end the run. Takes out his two best players. Changes pace completely. Emright calls for Ferguson. Attacks right of the lane. Wilkins hasn't gotten a look. And right over the contest. That was a difficult shot. And Mula boxes out and inhales the rebound. Jones blows past everybody. Lance Jones, who averages 14 per game, has 16. Way the pace has been the last couple of minutes. You can see some longer strides now. As perhaps a little bit tired. Overdue for a stoppage. Uh, There's a floater for Garrett Sturts. Well, Penn and DeVries are getting rest right now. And they clearly needed it. Wilkins left his man Banks to double on. The mask. There he goes again. The mask was not seeing single coverage. To the corner. Round three. Well short. Calhoun a leaning three off the front iron. Ferguson chases but can't corral it. And the loss to Southern Illinois up next. First, it was the blow by Lance Jones. Like a nickname, like the night shift <laughs> or the race cars or something, because it really does feel like a whole different team when those two come in and control the pace. Absolutely. Increase the pace. DJ Wilkins, number zero, has been in the entire time, but has not gotten any good looks, and he's a very good three point shooter. 1,300 points, something like that in his career. Jones in and out crossover, delivers back to Banks, launches a three too strong. And Wilkins, you mentioned not getting the three-point looks, but he's still contributing on the glass. Yeah, and defensively, too. He, he's, his quickness can match some of the guys he's guarding here. Sturts, line drive runner, front rim, Brody, physical to get the O board. And finds Brody. Muscles, Penn gets it back with the left. Wow. Right place, right time. Give Brody some credit, too. He kept that play alive. Sturts on demands. It's the starting group for Drake. And that guard, Lula, way away. Brody stays in the paint. Good strategy if when the ball gets to the paint, he can do something defensive. That's offensive. You're right on the money. Called an offensive foul. He pushed off with his left arm as he was going to the basket. A lot of times you can get away with that. Right here, watch Roman Penn come into the picture here. 
Right place, right time, two points. Drake looking to make it three straight trips to the Valley Championship game. Bradley awaits 2 p.m. Eastern tomorrow on CBS. Look at this matchup. You got a 6-7 guy, D'Amico, on Penn. The Breeze can't pay off the possession. Jones had nowhere to go. Floats it out to the three-point line. Jawan Newton. That was some quickness by Wiggins there. Back door, Wilkins got a ball in it. And Newton dies, but can't stay in. That's the defensive effort for the Bulldogs and Wilkins. That was some quickness. Both guys. Newton was very quick as well. Backdoor cut. He hits it off his knee. Great effort. He was out of bounds right there, and it went out of bounds again. Bang that elbow, too. Let's go to Evan. Guys, we've mentioned how this bench has improved this year for Drake. Well, the defense has as well. Maybe not as many steals, maybe not as athletic or dynamic, but Darren DeVries told us, look, our team defense, we're better connected. It's improved on that end, and you see it here in these critical moments. Well, that's the thing. Sometimes you look at the stocks number, steals and blocks, but that doesn't tell you the story of what makes a great half-court defense. Yeah, and, and connected is a word that coaches use quite a lot, and it means that you're guarding the ball well, and then when you're not, you got to Say it with your chest! The folks who have traveled from Des Moines, Jenton Brody to the big for the Bulldogs. He rips down the rebound. Sturts again involved. A block shot by Troy D'Amico. To poke it. The officials discussed and it belongs to Southern Illinois. Brody! Brody from Newark, New Jersey. Transfer from Seton Hall. Been here for a few years. They have needed him in this game and uh, he has responded. Clear out on the right. hands Garrett Sturts with that deflection that I know every coach likes to track interesting here uh, there is no center in the game for Southern Illinois so Brody has to guard the Nico who's you know six seven but you know kind of a uh, four-man type he's at the top of the key and they run the action to target Brody on the uh, pick and pop to create space in the lane but it doesn't result in a bucket no and Johnson's been off a little bit in this game He's made some good plays because he's such an intelligent player. That's good D by Newton on Penn. Penn gets it again. Crossover step back. Decline to shoot it. Shot clock. Just at five. Somebody has to launch. Sturt spins all the way. Pretty move for Gary Sturts. A sense of the clock. A sense of where you are. Spin cycle was gorgeous. And look at him working like crazy on a superstar player. The officials take a timeout here. The drive to the basket, the spin, and the easy layup. Garrett Sturts knows how to play basketball. Wow. <laughs> Perfect timing. Slides between two players, just lays it in. Leading rebounder in the history of Drake basketball at 6'3. Not bad for a former walk on. The mask was yeah. a little bit ginger on that last sequence. Well, Evan, Evan, had Evan had talked to us earlier in the game about the, uh, the fact that he had turned his ankle and uh, he's been less than his norm today. And maybe that's been the issue. He's turned his ankle there. See that for Southern Illinois. Down 16. Rupert to try to get closer. And Brody gobbles it up. Six minutes left. Back to the 16-point lead that they had at the half. Penn has the 
switch against the big. Takes the fade away off the front of the rim. Rupert's open deep. Rupert is open deep. Didn't see him. Jones uses that arm to create space. Step back three. And that kind of night for Southern Illinois. 15 boards for Brody. He looks a little winded right now. 16 rebounds, excuse me. Hard to believe he had just one rebound in 18 minutes in the quarterfinal against Murray State. DeVries, way too strong. Wow, air ball. Don't see that much. Under five. Saluki's down 16. The possession that's taking a lot of time. They're trying to get Jones one on one, but uh... starts making another heady play, knocking it away. What the shoot from half court. Shot clock violation. Great hustle, both guys. He's a dog, Garrett <laughs> Sturts. <laughs> uh, let, let's take a look at what happens right here. It's going to be on the sideline. Sturts is guarding him. He goes down the sideline. I don't even think that would. I mean, he just pivoted. Wow. And he really didn't have it from the very beginning. He tried to tough it out on the glass, seven boards, which is five points. Little weave action right here. The basket is clear when this happens, and now you can drive it. Pocket pass. Brody spins. Rolls off the front of the rim. Gets it back. And then poked away. Rupert didn't give up. Big who can triple it down the floor himself and initiate offense. Jones scoops. High off glass. He's got a scorer's mentality. I don't think there's any doubt about that with Jones. But right now, when you're down this many points and you've got a pressure, Takes a lot out of you. Do they have one more run? Maybe it starts with the offensive foul on Sucker DeVries. Well, Boise and Nevada, I think, are in in terms of uh, Jerry Palm. And New Mexico has had a couple of bad losses in the last two weeks, and I think they've uh, kind of played their way out of it. But it's been a great league this year and last year. Now to West Tournament next week at the quarterfinals. Semi-finals on CBS Sports Network, championship game on CBS. That would be crazy in Vegas. And there is an offensive foul called on Southern Illinois. 17 rebounds for that guy in your picture. Not that guy, but Darnell Brody, that guy. 17 boards. That is doing some work. And he is 6'10", 275 pounds. And he has made a big impact on this game. Xavier Johnson is fouled out. He committed that last foul. So he is done. Six points, two of eight shooting. It's been, it's been a balanced thing with uh, Drake in this game. And that's a that's fantastic for them. So they don't, you know, they can't count on DeVries and Penn to uh, do all the scoring every single game. So this was a good test against the number three team. And typically at the end of the game is what uh, Penn does, those kind of plays. When they're ahead, he really, really becomes more effective. After Drake, and you have the Larry Bird Conference Player of the Year, and DeVries, he can go an entire half without a point, you build your lead. I mean, that goes to show you yep. how dangerous they are as they get closer to a meeting against Bradley for the Missouri Valley Championship. Good point. Wilkins has been absent from the offense as well. A lot of pain and a lot of Brody. Count the basket and one. Exclamation point for Drake. Double double. Two years. He's he's developed beautifully with his opportunity here. Oh. 
10 points, career high, 17 rebounds, five of them offensive rebounds for some extra possessions. Brown catches low, rises high, and rattles it down. Not bad from Trent Brown. That was long also. Drake. Man, he got hit in the face twice. <laughs> Brody screams, bone <laughs> crushing. <laughs> his options and writes the choice. Wilkins has been quiet. Nice use of clock. Then gets fouled on the reach. Jones reached in. And he gets the foul. It's shooting. He can toy around with you, can he? Throw him in pen. You get a lead and you just give him the ball and he controls it. Doesn't turn it over. Yesterday he had 16 points, 10 assists, one turnover. 15 point game, a minute 43 left. No bounce there. Almost start to turn the page a little bit and think of Drake Bradley meeting number three for the conference championship. Of course, those two met at the end of the regular season at Bradley for the crown that Bradley won. Yeah. And you know, I mean, it, it's it's what uh, people thought would happen. You know, they were they uh, were thought of as the two best teams in the league. They got plenty of challenges, close games, runs by other teams, and uh, you know, they're playing 20 league games now. So I don't I don't envision you know any 18 and two champs or anything like that. You know, teams are going to lose four or five games. Good to see Damask back in there late in the game and exploding off that ankle to dunk it. 10 seconds. I get it across. You're right. We talked to all these coaches of the winning teams yesterday, and they all kind of commented about the 20 game conference season and how brutal it is and tough with the different styles that you get in this league. And a person at the end of that, healthy and ready to make a run, it is difficult. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's 12 teams now, which is more than they've ever had. And two of the teams that were added, Belmont and Murray, had been, you know, schools with great basketball traditions. And UIC is in Chicago, so they should be able to get it going. And once a team wins here in St. Louis, they typically do damage in the big dance. Loyola has done that. Collision off the air ball. Trent Brown's the one who hits the deck hard. And it is a foul called on Drake. Looks like to make it Wilkins. That is indeed the case. Air ball, they got tangled up. A non-shooting play. Where Connor Enright gets around the ball, doesn't he? I mean. When they have it and when they don't have it, I mean, he is, he is Energizer Bunny. One of the rare times the mask not even seeing a double team. They can't make them pay and a foul called on Brown. So we talked about Drake and Bradley. They've met twice. First meeting, home game for Drake, and they took it to the Braves, dominated it. This game, just a week ago, meeting number two for the regular season crown at Bradley with a big second half, got the win. Yeah, and it, I, I watched the full game of that. I mean, it was brilliantly done by Bradley and uh, tight for a while, and they just took control of the game. Drake's made it to the last two championship games, about to be three in a row. Losses to Loyola, Chicago, their previous two trips. And they erase the heartbreak and have this experienced team of 25-year-olds, 24-year-olds in the lineup. Look what they came back to do. They came back to either win a regular season or a tournament championship. 
And they're about to be in a position to get that 20 crown. Well, Roman Penn exits. You know, you begin to think all the time when you do semifinals in these conference tournaments and what time the games are tomorrow and so on, and you think, well, does Drake have a disadvantage a little bit because they play later in the evening, you know, less than 24 hours to survive, to, to replenish for the next game? p.m. Eastern time tomorrow the Valley Championship game of Arch Madness Drake and Bradley and Again we mentioned once uh, you win here Like your chances in the uh, the big tournament. They've combined the conference 20 wins in the last nine NCAA tournaments Yeah, it, it's been a good run for a bunch of teams and uh, It's a, it really is a terrific basketball conference and you know, I think the general consensus is that there's only going to be one this year. Whoever wins tomorrow gets the automatic qualifying. And uh, a lot of people feel that there's not going to be any others. Davidson, Rhode Island, that'll be streaming on CBSSports.com and on the CBS Sports app. We'll take you out there as soon as this one is done. And that tip off at 8 10 Eastern as the Atlantic 10 winds down before their conference tournament in Brooklyn. I'm looking forward to that. I'll be there doing the games there and uh, Barclays is a great center. How about those two guys? They've been together forever. <laughs> and this is a lineup that they can put a starting five together that is older than a handful of starting five in the NBA. 25 <laughs> year olds, 24 year olds, guys who have been here a long time. D'Amico, third chance. <laughs> Rewarded with a foul, he'll head to the line. First Drake the previous four years. There's always the images of March though, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's Jones. He gave it his all. I think all the Salukis did. They came in here really juiced up. They were electric to start the game, and then they were, were down big at halftime by 16, and they came out fired up like crazy and got right back into the game. And I just kind of think they ran out of gas, and uh, the execution of Drake is always good offensively. And I think the move that the Vries made where he put in the substitutes that were added quickness to his lineup in the first and second half, and even yesterday, was brilliant, and I think something that uh, we're going to see tomorrow as well. Well, it's a good year for Southern Illinois. Won 20 games for the first time since 2016 2017. But Drake going back to a familiar spot the Missouri Valley Conference Championship game for the third.